You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. I am Clint. Welcome to Lock on Bulldogs, your team every day. Glad you're here with us. If you're over on the audio side, thanks for being a part of that. Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, hmm. Google Play, whatever it is you do. Uh, mm-hmm. Audible, maybe. Maybe you got one of those, you know, Ooh. little, little, little they, Sono speaker. They, just, they got them. Just pipe it right there. out there. We, we over there. there. We my everywhere. son actually, my son found <laughs> our podcast and started listening from episode one, Daniel. I'll tell you what. That's why the downloads are going up. I see. <laughs> that's why. That's why the numbers are spiking. That's exactly right. Hey, if you're over on the YouTube side, glad you're here. Glad you can see us. We can't see you, but we can see you when you comment. Oh, we can see, oh, we you, see you when you comment. Oh, we so see comment you. down below, follow, <laughs> give us that subscribe button. It's free to you. Get on over there. Uh, today, Daniel, we continue to talk about G-Day because why, why the would, heck not? Why would we talk about anything else, Clint? I don't know. That, there's literally nothing else to talk about right now, so let's talk about it. Other than uh, Coach White going ahead and, and grabbing a few people, just a, just a few, mm. few people just, from that He portal. got some returning players. You notice that the, the best players uh-huh. are coming back, and there's not very many of them. There's it's very small. It's a very <laughs> select group. Now we got Braylon Bridges coming back too. So okay. the the best okay. player on the team last year and the second best player on the team last year, both come back. Everybody else, sometimes it's addition by subtraction. Georgia fans, so that's don't be freaked out about that. Got some no. good guys coming in in the portal. There's more more to be had. So excited about nope. that. Um, but we're here to talk about G Day today. We're going to talk about the running back position Ooh, and there's hello. lots of things to discuss. Um, First, though, Clint, I I meant to say this yesterday or Monday, but while you were watching D-Day, did you have the same feeling that I did? And that and that feeling was immense pride, pride, not as a Georgia football fan, although there's many reasons to be proud of this team. Lots of those. Lots of reasons. Reigning national champions. Uh, mm. Got another great squad on the field. Mm. Kirby Smart as the head coach. Sanford Kirby. Stadium, the most the most beautiful venue to witness a sporting event in in the world. That's right. A lot of pride as a Georgia fan. But I felt pride specifically as a podcaster. Class. Okay. I felt, and not just pride, but a little, a little validation, dare I say, vindication as a podcaster. Because... Yep. Because sometimes you and I get a little heat from the from the commenter. We get a little we, we, we spout little off from time to time. I, I see that. I understand. That's fine. Sometimes people might have a critique of the podcast, which we're open to. We welcome. And but the most overwhelming critique that we get of the podcast, uh-huh. Clint, is not about the content. Nope. It's not about the way we talk. It's about it's about this thing right here. <laughs> It's, it's about, about our audio. It's about our video. It's a, it's about a whole lot of things that we are not the technical. Good at. The technical aspect is not really our executive producer intern Michael. You know, at this point, he is a deadbeat, a bum. He does nothing. <laughs> he listen. The man is worthless. But we're doing him a favor when, by keeping him on. You guys understand this. He's down in his, when, his luck. We're helping him out. When you helping him out by not paying him, I'm not sure what the what the <laughs> nuance is there, but. But when you turn on a game on ESPN, Clint, ESPN, uh-huh. quote unquote, the worldwide leader in sports is what I've been told. The most profitable sports yeah. network in history owned by Disney. You understand Correct. they got that Disney money coming in. Correct. You turn on a game on ESPN and you can't get that on the field microphone to work for anything. Clint. And that. And that camera just zooming. It's like 10 oh. seconds delayed. Camera just going all over the place. The play is already gone, and the camera camera person is getting back to it. No, we there was vindication on that. We're not the only r- ones, Daniel. Uh, I also felt vindication, and here's where I want to start because I'm not going to bury the lead any longer. Okay, do it. Dejon Edwards is a full-grown man. It's... Here. He is a full-grown man. Let's start there. When we talk about running backs, and I know – I, again, caveats abound. Yes, I understand. Sure. 
But if you want to watch a guy who just understand between the ears of a running back, what a running back is supposed to be and do always gain yards, never get, never go back. Always yep. going forward. Yep. Tough to tackle vision and yep. does the, the, the little tiny microcosms that a running back is every so often. Yeah. Najee Harris just gets out there and he says, come at me. I will eat you, you know? And it's just like, I'll just bulldoze you. That works every once in a while when you go for 700 carries a year. Um, sure. I understand that. But now listen, listen, I am not saying he is this man, but I'm going to give you another running back that knew the nuances of running back so well. And he happens to be a physical specimen unlike anybody else. Nick mm. Chubb never went oh. backwards. He mm -hmm. had vision. And he mm -hmm. knew the nuances of how to set up blocks and how to set up defenders. Dejon Edwards has that same mentality. I'm not saying he's the same running back. I'm telling no. you, he's the same. He has the same mentality as Nick Chubb, and it is it's impressive funny. to see. It's funny that you come with a comp because I was going to come with a comp as well. And it's listen, it's, let's. We got two more segments to go on the pod. We understand Dejan Edwards is not the first string tailback he's on not. this team. He's not like that's not what we're trying to say, but he is the guy that gets the juices flowing. And so that's just where we're going to start. We're going to talk about all these backs in the backfield and what we and what we saw from them and what we expect to see from the running back. But I'm going to I might take us to break, Clint, by another former Georgia great comes to mind when I watch Dejan Edwards. And, I, and again, not the same player, but I nope. I think he's got a little of that no Sean Marino mentality to him. I think he's got a little bit of that no Sean vibe where it just it looks like he's trying harder than everyone else on the field. Yes. And it shows. And yes. it shows. Not like in the sense that he's less talented, so he's a try hard, you know, like mm -hmm. has to get out there. But it just it looks like he wants it more. That was always the thing with no Sean. And it's one of the reasons why, other than I mean, some injury stuff and whatever. It's one of the reasons why Noshan didn't have as much of an NFL career as he did in college, because once he was on that level where everyone was supremely talented, there's only so far that effort can take you. But Noshan, he he got the most out of himself every single play. That's what I see from Dejan Edwards, and that's. That's plenty of reason to like this kid, Clint. It's it's all the reason. And plus, he is the captain of the Kirby Death March ship. Oh, yeah. Uh, and is, that's that's a captain that I will follow into battle mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, we're going to get back after this. Talk about the other running backs that did impress. And we're we're all about oh, yeah. impressive running backs. Trust us. Sure. We're not going to we're not going to forget them. But first, we'll let you know about Built Bar. Built Bar is the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth. How do we know? We've tried them. Uh, they come in mm -hmm. an abundance of flavors, chocolate, fruit, uh, birthday cake, as Daniel has just pontificated about and thought about for days. He's put he's missing. He's jonesing. It. Just put a little sprinkle on it. Literally sprinkles on it. Um, get over there to BuiltBar.com. Put on promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% 15 off your entire order. These Built Bars are incredible protein bars, the tastiest protein bar. They taste like a candy bar, but they are high in protein. They are high in fiber, low in sugar. They are meal replacement, on the go, pre-workout, post-workout. Whatever you need, they can be for you. As you have your busy schedule, as protein powders are disgusting, as protein bars are gross, uh, these are not that chalky, uh, stiff, hard, and quite frankly, just impossible to eat protein bars. These are the best protein bars on the planet. That's BuiltBar.com. Promo code LOCKEDON15 for 15% 15 off your entire order. All right, Clem, we're going to get to Kendall Milton, Kenny McIntosh, obviously the um, the featured backs in this Georgia one offense, and two. we'll call them. Absolutely. But I would be remiss if we did not talk about the first touchdown run that Dejan Edwards had. Second play of the second play of the I guess it was the red team's offense. So Correct. it wasn't the first drive of the game, but of that drive, Carson Beck hits the long pass to Arian Ooh. Smith. Ooh. And then on about the 10 yard line, uh hands off to Dejan Edwards, and he just whoop in the hole and he was gone. Clint, that yeah. move is something we've never seen from Dejan Edwards before. No, we've seen Dejan know where his point of attack and attack it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want a comp of a player that I think he is actually like, this player is better than Dejan, but I think Dejan is just Garrison Hurst. I watched Garrison Hurst for years and years and years in the West Coast offense. We're just of naming the pantheon of Georgia running backs right now as we talk. About, but you watch Garrison Hurst. Here's the third string back. 
with the but with the 49ers, he did, that was his move. Guys, that was his mm-hmm. move. It was it was misdirection. It was that kind of bleed out the back, and that's exactly what he did. It was an incredible, incredible play. Loved every second of it. Okay. Kendall Milton and Kenny Mack. Uh, let's yeah. talk about these two because we expect big things from these two. We expect gargantuan things. I've already made the statement, and I'm sticking by my claim, and y'all can come at me. This year's running backs will be better than last year's running backs, and that is a man who holds the record for longest run mm-hmm. in college football playoff game in James Cook yep. and Zamir White, who who bulldozed Who led the team in rushing for three straight years. Three yeah, straight years. Exactly. This year we're going to have better running backs, Daniel, and <laughs> this offense it's- is not going to go through them. Listen to me. And that's that's the key. That's the reason they're going to be better. I'm going to start there because, uh, listen, we talked about in the last two episodes, go back and listen. If you haven't listened to Tuesday's episode, we talked about the quarterbacks. If you haven't listened to people have opinions, I'm not sure if you're aware, but people have opinions about the quarterbacks. If you haven't listened to Monday's episode, we talked about the pass catchers. And we are going to get to the defense, by the way. We're going to spend the rest of the week talking about the defense. Don't worry about that. But – the reason these backs, you're going to, at the end of the year, you're going to say, oh man, I think these backs are better than last year's backs is because, let me just tell you, Clint, the box is light when you play this Georgia team. The box, it's like that Christmas present that you pick up and uh-huh, it's just a uh-huh. handwritten note that says, you know, look outside in the shed or something, you know, like this, that like, you, you're like it's too big to wrap and uh-huh, you pick it up uh-huh. and you go, ooh, this is, this one's too light. Uh, that's what the box is going to be like when you face Georgia this year because all those weapons at pass catcher, Clint. And you can't put your big bodies on the field because your big body's just going to get blown by by guys that's- like Eric Gilbert and Brock Ooh. Bowers. Those guys are going to just speed past you if you try to, if you try to match up with them. So you're going to have a lot of little guys on the field being blocked by big guys, Clint. <laughs> now, I'm yes. no mathematician. <laughs> okay, but say more. It just feels like 240 pounds is greater than 180 pounds. And so... See, this is what people don't understand about this Todd Munkin offense. You, Yes, we're going to be in 13 personnel quite a bit this year. Okay, I understand mm-hmm. that. You understand that. We all understand that. We're going to get these big. But all of a sudden, then when you have that look, and not to do a diatribe really quick, but this is why Stetson Bennett coming back and playing this game, because while Carson Beck has better arm talent, see all we've ever not said. Not a doubt. Not a doubt. Never anything contrary to that. Not a doubt. But all of a sudden, you get in 13 personnel. You widen everybody out. You look at the box, and Stetson Bennett has the abject confidence, has the mo- – has the- mm-hmm manliness mm-hmm. to look at that box and be like he, th- there's one linebacker right there this one i have this, i have this, five this. i have five of the best blocking uh linemen in the sec there's one linebacker and i got kendall milton back here and they all mm-hmm. out there trying to okay hey kendall whoop, whoop, do a yep. little do a little inside and it's- watch magic happens this is you're exactly right this is going to be a check with me offense this is going to be an offense that's predicated based upon matchups uh, and these running backs will – the average yards per carry this year for mm-hmm. these three is mm-hmm. going to be exceptional. It's going to be – I think Kendall Milton's going to average 5.6, 5.8. I think Kenny McIntosh is going to average 6.5. I think Dejon mm-hmm. Edwards is going to be lower than those two. But I think 5.5 to 6 is the range of yards per carry for these two coming out of the backfield, Daniel. And then we've not even really – yeah, I, we've not even really talked about them – catching the ball which we'll do in segment three their ability to to catch the ball but but i couldn't agree with you more and i think you've got a versatility of weapons here in terms of the way people carry the ball and and listen i do think it is going to be a three-person rotation at running back dejan edwards is no longer the uh the mop-up duty guy okay you're going to see him in meaningful snaps all throughout the season uh I do think Kendall's going to get the bulk of the carries, and I think he's a perfect guy, as you mentioned, to yes. get the bulk of the carries because he gets stronger as the game goes on. Kirby Smart said that at G Day. He gets stronger as the game goes on, and and when you know, again, people hear thirteen personnel, they hear three titans on the field, and they probably think to themselves, that means there's going to be more people in the box because you got more yes. big bodies. But guess what? These tight ends are going to be split out wide. 
And guess what? Todd Munkin knows. Let's see. We got three tight ends, Clint. Eric Gilbert, Brock Bowers, and Darnell Washington. They're all on the field. Which one of those three guys are you most likely to cover with a linebacker, not a safety? Which one of the three, as a defensive coordinator, do you say, okay, I'll put a linebacker on him and not a safety? Uh, the most likely is Big O. Is it you Big put a o. linebacker on Big O? Guess where Big O is going to be on these formations, Clint? Uh, right at the end, right next to Broderick Jones. And no, right next to no, he no, won't no, be there. there. No, he'll oh. be way out on the outside, Clint. Oh, that's right. And so now, guess what? Your best tackler on the team, Henry To'o To'o, not only can he not cover Big O, we've seen it many times. We've seen it many, many. times. Uh, not only can he not cover Big O, but now – your leading tackler is standing on the sideline, and we're running inside zone. And you have to He's bring not your there safety anymore. Down. You have yeah. to bring your safety. And, down. Your and look, safety I love Christopher doesn't Smith. Want any. He doesn't want any of Kendall Milton. I love Ken Christopher Smith. I think he's a, a fantastic safety. If you told me Christopher Smith is coming down in the box to take on Kendall Milton on a one-on-one -on -one situation, and you were to ask me a betting side, I know my betting side. It's Kendall Milton. This, it just there's so many options. For an offensive mind like Todd Munkin, and even for idiot lay fans like us, you can just see them as plain as day that this running game is going to have so many opportunities because of the way that the weapons in the passing game have the opportunity to get a defensive coordinator in trouble. That's exactly right. Uh, we're going back over this to talk about the passing game because Kendall Milton showed me something that I am thrilled for. Kenny McIntosh showed me something that I am thrilled for. We're going to talk about that right after Daniel. Let's know about rock auto RockAuto.com is the full mustache of auto parts retailers. You don't want to go to a big box auto parts store. And I'll tell you why, because the, the kid behind the counter, and I use the word kids intentionally, the kid behind the counter is going to tell you that they're out of stock of the part that you need, but they can order one from the warehouse. Well, guess what? RockAuto.com is the warehouse. You don't have to go talk to that kid. You don't have to spend, waste your time leaving the house and driving there just so you can wait for it to be shipped to you. You don't have to pay the premium markup that that big box auto parts store charges you to sell you that part. You can go to rockauto.com and you can get the exact part that your car needs delivered straight to your door, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. And then you work on your car yourself. Clint, are the prices of things going up or going down these days? Uh, Have you noticed that there's a... I, I feel like this is a trick political question. I'm not in an economic engage. environment, no, but not, I just feel I'm not going here. Listen, take your car to the mechanic and see what he says to you about replacing uh, the, your muffler or your oil great. filter or you, just see what he's. It's not going to be great for you, but you can do that yourself and you can get the rely, uh, uh, the exact right part at a reliably low price from rockauto.com when you go there put in locked on in the how'd you hear about a section it lets them know that we sent you which is helpful for us thank you and it guarantees that you will get the exact right part that your car needs at the absolute most reliably low price rockauto.com uh your official auto parts retailer all right, let's talk about these pass catching running backs as well. And do not at me. I swear one of the laziest takes I've ever heard in my entire life, and it continues to be the laziest take, and yet it keeps on coming back time and time again. If you want to trigger me into non-fandom, into just like wolf attitude, uh -oh. say thunder, say thunder and lightning to me. <laughs> say thunder and lightning to, to me. You. One I more time. You, because I can't take it. And Kindle There's Milton, not even a thunder and lightning on this team. That's well, not that's, there's that's what I mean. There. And there wasn't when the, the no, phrase there was been. made. There, there hasn't, hasn't been. been. Nick no. Chubb outruns anybody in the league. Okay? No. So, so the, the I, last time Georgia had thunder and lightning was Keith Marshall, Todd Gurley. But it turns out they weren't thunder and lightning. They were um, tornado. Uh-huh. Freight uh, train. And fast guy. Like, that was, <laughs> that was the... That was right. the... I don't no. know what... Look, don't don't I mean this and don't pigeonhole Kenny McIntosh and Kendall Milton into pass catching back or not. Because what I saw from G Day is the ability 
to continue to expand the playbook no matter which running back is on the field. Kenny McIntosh has a little bit more hip wiggle to him. I understand that. And you want to call that that quickness or you want to talk about that a little I, I don't really care because Kendall Milton has that same thing but the play that was exceptional to me I think if I'm, I, I wasn't in the film room I don't know the play call but I think Kendall Milton on his catch what was it like 25 30 yard reception yeah uh, down the middle of the field I think that was an option route that he he checked off and read beautifully. I thought he saw the linebacker rushing mm. out, getting over the top, trying to take away the flat. And I think he turned it up field in a hurry and went down the hash. That was his option to do. And he read it perfectly. And he got hit in stride with it, Daniel. Now, either that or mm-hmm. he set up that pass route beautifully. Either one of those options, I don't really care. Because either one shows me that Kendall Milton is exceptional. And I use exceptional because of his body frame, because of his size, because at at maneuverability in the open field, specifically in the pass game, it doesn't limit us. And then Kenny McIntosh, that wheel route or that go route on the side that he did was just, it was carbon copy, James Cook, like carbon copy. There's it, no drop off. It he There's not a drop off. There is a step up. Kenny McIntosh has the best hands of anybody on this team. I've said it for years now. He is he is better at catching balls that hit him in the hands than any person on this team, and and so he is a bona fide weapon. To your point, Kenny uh, Kendall Milton is is growing in that role as a pass catcher too. And versatility is what you have to have in this offense because the mm. the worst thing that you could be is predictable, right? You get this guy back there in the backfield, and you know he's not running out in a pattern, so he's either going to block or or receive a handoff and carry and and carry the ball. Those are no longer the only two options that you have to worry about when you have a guy like Kendall Milton on the field. And and now again, I, this is not a conversation about Stetson Bennett. And just full disclosure, I do not want to hear your Stetson Bennett takes, even though you've already left them in the comments. I apologize. By the way, you've already ever. Left. I don't want to hear your Stetson well, Bennett takes. Uh, that's fine. It's, it's a podcast for fans by fans. And so your Stetson Bennett takes are always welcome here. But okay. this All is right. not – listen, just listen to the words I'm saying. This is what makes having a veteran quarterback really important because mm. when you're able to – just imagine you get the guys lined up and there's still 18 seconds left on the play clock, right? And you got Kenny McIntosh and Kendall Milton flanking either side. Mm. Of Stetson Bennett. Now, Stetson Bennett observes the defense, or any veteran quarterback, any veteran quarterback observes the defense, reads what's happening on the defense, and he says, Hey, Kenny McIntosh, why don't you flare out all the way out there to the boundary? And now let's just watch what happens. Let's watch where the guys go. Yes, let's sir. watch who moves where. And now maybe we we send Kendall Milton out to the slot. And so now we we went from A a two-back personnel (laughs) to a five-wide personnel. But the defense has not substituted, Clint. The defense hasn't had an opportunity. And so now, guess what? Mismatch on mismatch. Whatever safety was going to roll over the top of Brock Bowers, well, he's now occupied because there's something else going on over here in the slot. And so now the play opens up. There's so many options. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. As a a defensive player way back when the the easiest thing in the world here's the easiest thing and the thing that i loved um you give me personnel that i know about pre-snap and you give me a play and tendencies that i know if if defensive players continue to get smarter if i know what play you're going to run based upon tendencies and i know what to expect if there's hey this tight end i i know i got to get over the top of him and i know i just got to fight through a block or hey this receiver out here i i need to get a little bit more giddy up i need to open my hips to get out there quicker on him guys that's easy for defense when you start sweating when you start sweating is when as a defensive player you look out and you look at formation and you say i have no idea what they're going to run right now he's not supposed to be over there and all of a sudden i i don't i haven't pigeonholed him i can't fight over the top of him and do pass defense at the same time on him I need to choose one pre-snap, and that's when you get into explosiveness on offense, and this is exactly what we have. Mm. This offense is going to be special. Daniel, this offense is going to be special. I'm talking 40 points a game special. Special. 
All right, we're going to come back tomorrow. (laughs) We're going to talk about, hey, defense. Defense is where we're heading now, and there's a lot to talk about. Mm. We are actually – I I won't speak for Daniel. I'm very hopeful on this defense, and I saw some things that are very, very high marks for me. Some things that need worked out, clearly. Okay. I'm high on this defense, and we're going to tell you about that. Come back tomorrow. This is Locked On Bulldogs here on Locked On Podcast, your team every day. See ya.